Hi folks, this is Erica. This is Laughing Lagomorphs, in case you didn't know. <laughs> um, just a little housekeeping here. Um, I um, am looking uh, for questions, uh, comments. Again, please be polite. Um, and you know if you want to subscribe that's great I'm not in this for you know number of subscribers um, but I would like feedback and I um, would love for you to share the video uh, the videos in Laughing Lagomorphs um, I'm also sort of considering starting up my blog again um, Anyway, so would like to know thoughts about that. I would also really like to know um, what you want me to talk about when it comes to house rabbits. Um, you know, there's a wide variety of topics. Health, breeding, um, I don't know. I mean, the list goes on and on. So you know, please let me know. Um, there's a lot, I, you know, there are a lot of folks out there on YouTube who are doing similar type videos. I think I'm kind of coming at it from a different perspective because of the things that I've encountered um, dealing with rescue and, um, you know, just, you know, I have a different uh experience you know sort of so I'm trying to I'm trying to educate and advocate and um, but I'm also willing to teach um, inform um, and if you ask me a question I don't have the answer to I I will do buckets of research to get you you know the right answer okay all that being said with this video, I want to talk about the meat, the rabbit meat industry. Okay, I don't know where you live, um, but where I am in North Texas, there's a big movement uh, about ur urban farming, and um, I'm I'm all for it. You know, I think it's great to you know if you can get your grocery bill down by growing your own veggies and and whatnot. I think that's awesome um, if you have some hens and you can get your own eggs and heck if you have a cow you know get your own dairy all that you know I I'm all for it I'm actually um, starting I, I'm joining a co-op uh, so that I can get um, raw dairy I need raw dairy you know not homogenized not pasteurized etc etc so anyway, um, but I've been getting a lot of questions from friends, um, acquaintances, people who are involved in this urban um, farming movement about meat rabbits. And um, when I was first approached to uh, do something, um, of an organized fashion, I I accepted, and then after a lot of thought and discussion with some people, um, I've declined because um, there's a general attitude about rabbits that, well, they're just rabbits, you know, um, and it's in the breeding arena as well as you know pet breeding as well as the um, meat meat rabbit meat is becoming some kind of like I don't know thing and I I'm sure it's because you know rabbits uh, reproduce like rabbits reproduce you know um, anyway um, I don't think any of these people who are involved in this are doing what they're doing out of malice. 
I think a lot of it is ignorance about rabbits and um, domesticated rabbits. You know, they are not, as I've said in different videos, they are not the same as wild rabbits. Um, I don't know how many centuries it's taken, um, but human beings have bred out a lot of characteristics that wild rabbits have, um, have bred that out of our domesticated rabbits. And the, and the typical uh, rabbit that would be used for meat would be a Californian or a New Zealand. Um, and you can look up those breeds and get pictures so that you have a big, you know, an idea. Um, they grow pretty fast. Um, and they're usually, um, slaughtered at, you know, six months or so. So they're big enough at six months to, you know, have, be, be you know, an, a, a nice size, you know, more than chicken, more than a chicken as far as volume of meat goes. And that's why I think it's becoming very popular. Um, but I'm coming from a stewardship perspective as I have iterated in all my videos. Um, and I've done, I've been doing a lot of, uh, of my own research, uh, looking at rabbit trees um, and things like that. One thing I want to bring up, um, recently in Ontario, Canada, and I will put a link below in the descriptions uh, about the story, um, was about a commercial large scale rabbit tree um, for meat. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, what the headline said. Um, it was like hell. So the people who came in and uh, uh, kind of, you know, rescued these rabbits uh, and did the documentary and stuff like that on them on the situation, um, they were pretty clear and they are pretty graphic videos that I think would make anybody, uh, just cringe. The point I'm, t the point I want to make here, aside from the cruelty and, and that kind of thing is that what we've done in breeding out certain things uh, from wild rabbits uh, is an immune system. Domesticated rabbits do not have the same immune system as a wild rabbit. So therefore they cannot sustain parasites. They cannot sustain common diseases uh, that are, you know, anal certain animals have common diseases that, um, you know, they spread around to each other. Um, and the domesticated rabbits don't, you know, they're severely lacking in that. So one of, and this is another video I will link in the description box. It's a short, I don't know, 16 minute video on something called E. cuniculi, cu sorry, E. cuniculi. Um, and the veterinarians struggle uh, so much uh, to try to get this disease uh, under control when it happens to a pet rabbit and, you know, uh, the owners bring you know, they, they, they notice signs that something is wrong. Um, so it's, it's 
it's not a curable disease. Um, it's gone back and forth as to whether or not it's caused by a protozoan or whether it's uh, caused by a fungi. Um, the veterinary, veterinarian science is leading to a fungi now. Um, but that being said, it infects the meat, the flesh of the rabbit. And um, if you're eating rabbit meat, um, and this is a very, very common illness. This is extremely common. Most rabbits don't show signs, and especially a rabbit who is slaughtered at six months. Um, you're ingesting that, and um, whatever other diseases uh, that rabbit has picked up from whatever environment it is, whether it's, you know, the battery size cages or I've seen some um, interesting uh, um, sort of free roam kind of, uh, um, I don't know, where they're able to kind of move around about a lot more and stuff like that. Anyway, um, rabbits pass this disease on to each other through urine or uh, the mother will pass it along to her young in utero. And so um, even if they're not showing signs of, of the disease, it's still infecting the meat and you're eating that. And I've been trying to get this point across to people that rabbit meat is not healthy meat to eat. And I can't seem to impress people um, on that message. Um, I'm not saying it's like evil to eat rabbit meat, okay? Um, there's other topics I want to talk about, but I don't want this video to go like incredibly long, okay? I'm, I am keeping an eye on my timestamp here. So, um, I, I want to talk about the raising of the rabbits. I've been asked to kind of put together what my ideal sort of uh, backyard rabbitry setup would look like. And I have some ideas, but I want to stress that I am not promoting people eating rabbit meat because of the diseases. But there are people who are just going to ignore me and they're going to do it. And so from a humane perspective and an ethical perspective, I'm, I'm sort of making a compromise and I have some thoughts. But I think at the end of the day, when it comes to the raising and the slaughtering, uh, the cost benefit ratio goes out the window. <laughs> Um, if, if I were to lay out my ideal, humane, um, uh, you know, setup, um, the cost benefit ratio would, would just not pay off. I've seen, I've watched, you know, a couple of, uh, um, people who have gotten out of it, uh, for this reason you know, the cost benefit ratio, you know, they're trying to do something really humane. Um, they're trying different techniques in free range and, you know, that sort of thing. And it, it, it um, the cost benefit ratio isn't, it's easier to have chickens free range and, and then you get the benefit of the eggs also. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I want to post another video about that, but I want you all to um, give me your feedback in the comments about where you are and this urban uh, farming thing 
And if you know uh, neighbors or friends or yourself who are doing um, the rabbit meat um, to feed your families, um, you know, objectively speaking, I don't think there's anything wrong with the concept, but uh, when you boil down to things uh, like um, the immune system of a rabbit, <clears throat> the diseases that it can have and spread and, you know, um, any, you know, all that stuff. I don't think it's a good choice of meat. Um, but I know it's very easy because rabbits breed like rabbits. So, um, and then in another video, I will get into my concerns when I lay out my plan, I will get into my concerns about what the current uh, mode of, of doing this is. Um, and once you see that video of what happened in Ontario, Canada, um, what I see in these small backyard rabbitries, either for uh, pets, you know, pet rabbits, or um, meat rabbits, um, it, it, it's, it's the same thing as what happened on Ont in, uh, in Ontario, uh, just on a smaller scale. And so in that video, I will talk about the ethical issue, the humanitarian issue, um, all the other things that are, are just uh, bad stewardship. Um, but this one is about health, your health. And um, well, okay, that's, that's what I have to say right now. I was hoping Boniface would join me, but he is, um, I don't know, I think he went to bed. Um, I apologize if I look kind of like the I have allergies that are just out of control. So my face is swollen, my eyes are swollen, everything is running. I'm sniffing, I'm sniffling, whatever. Um, okay, so now I've gone way further than I wanted to go. I'm almost at the 18 minute mark and I am gonna shut this down. Please, please give me your comments. I, I really wanna hear, I just want them to be civil, okay? Thank you from Laughing Lagomorphs. Bye-bye.